we've now defeated half of the Order of No Quarter. Pat yourself on the back, we've done some good work here. Now, good work deserves some good rest, so let's finally go take a look at what this new village has in store. With this music, this place definitely has more of a military vibe to me, which will become more apparent as we climb up into this airship! Up here we have a couple of blacksmiths. This one specializes in armor. There's lots of different types of armor, each with different effects, such as losing less money when you die, having less knockback when you take damage, and having a higher magic capacity. I won't be buying any of these at the moment, but don't fret. I will be showing off all of these as I progress through the game. Just not right now. This blacksmith, on the other hand, specializes in weapons. Now these upgrades I will be buying. First up we have the charge handle. Now we have a charge attack. When charging, I move pretty slowly, even when jumping, so for newcomers this isn't the most useful move, but once you really know the ins and outs of combat and you've got a lot of enemy patterns memorized, you can dish out some serious damage with this attack, as the charge attack does twice as much damage as a normal attack, and it charges relatively quickly. Next up, we're going to buy the Trench Blade. With the Trench Blade, I can now dig up piles of dirt in a single scoop. I can't really show it off here because there's no dirt for me to dig up, but it's a nice little quality of life upgrade to have. Finally, we have the Drop Spark. Do you remember how back in the first Zelda, if you had full health, when you swung your sword you would shoot a laser out? Well, this is that, except it's a little bit more fitting of Shovel Knight's character. This laser, if you want to call it a laser, travels along the ground. Not the most powerful attack, but it's a nice little convenience to have. It's a free ranged attack. Other than that, we don't have much outside of relics. I do have a couple other characters up here. They don't sell anything, but they are fun to talk to. Hopefully this jovial dwarf will someday find a wonderful duet partner. Now I'm sure we all unfortunately remember Croker in the village. More importantly, I'm sure we all remember his terrible jokes. I have some bad news for you. Even worse jokes are inbound. Sadly, it is not Toter with the awful jokes, it is Shovel Knight himself, a character we are stuck with for the rest of the game. Now, just like Croker, I'm not going to sit here and force you to listen to him talk about these terrible, terrible jokes for 10 minutes straight, so instead I'm going to post all of these jokes in the thread as well. Now, before we press onwards, I am going to talk to a couple other random villagers just to wash that taste out of our mouth. That's very convenient. Sorry, Mary, but I am a spoken man. Now in here, Mr. Hat runs a very spectacular hat shop. Approaches as well, I suppose. I'm not in the business of handing out money to random strangers. Uh, this place is actually an optional... Well, I'll leave it a secret. I'll come back to this later. 
Other than that, we've seen just about everything this outpost has to offer, so it's about time we set back out onto our adventure. Okay, I've avoided them long enough, but now we have two people out on the map looking for our blood. Let's go ahead and encounter our first wandering traveler. Raze is very straightforward. He jumps, he throws boomerangs, and sometimes he dive kicks you. He's not going to do any new attacks until later in the fight, and even then he's only going to do it once, and it's harmless. So instead let's talk about how this is actually a character designed by a Kickstarter backer. I haven't mentioned it yet, but Shovel Knight was actually a Kickstarter game. And Raze here, among a few other bosses, was a backer reward. You know, designer for a day, you know the drill, there's been a lot of Kickstarters with this kind of stuff. This actually isn't even the first piece of media Raze has shown up in. He was originally posted to the creator's DeviantArt account back in 2001, and since then he's shown up in the game Baldus Story and in the comic Hero Party. So if you were wondering why he just kinda comes out of nowhere and accuses us of something completely randomly, well, there's your answer. There's still one more punk out here on the map, though he has kind of wandered off on his own. But I'd like to leave him to close out the video, so instead, let's go tackle these bonus levels down here. This bonus area starts out pretty interesting, but then it becomes a whole lot less interesting very quickly. For now, though, this first room is great. There's all these dirt blocks filled with gold, and it's so tempting to just hit those snails. But that's actually the opposite of what you want to do. Otherwise, all the gold is just going to fall down off the screen, and you lose it all. So instead, you need to fight the temptation and work around the snails. Now where it gets kind of crappy is that first drop. I don't really like that there's only gold on one side and not the other, with no way for you to really tell that's the case before you fall down. It's honestly just a 50-50 shot. And while it's not a lot of gold, it's just not very satisfying. If you fall down on the left side of the screen, all you can really do is say, Oh, well, I, I guess I'll do better next playthrough, if I remember. We've plundered what was left aboard the Iron Whale, so it's time to set our sights elsewhere. There's still gold to be had, after all, in Knuckler's Quarry. Yeah! This is the weapon-specific bonus level I like the most, just because the Dust Knuckles are really fun. Honestly, it's kind of sad how infrequently you have opportunities in most levels to use the Knuckles for this purpose. To dash through blocks to travel greater distances than otherwise possible. I mean, it makes sense. Not everyone is going to have the Knuckles, it's just 
A lot of the time, dirt blocks show up in stages. There's only a couple of them touching each other, or all of them are clumped up in a corner or something. It's just, I just really love extra movement mechanics. I'd love to play with them, I'd love to try to go faster or go to locations not intended, and I'd love to have seen the Dust Knuckles get more chances to shine throughout the game. Guess that's it for bonuses. I can't really think of anything else I can do to put off fighting this last guy. So, uh, let's go fight this other wandering traveler, I guess. I will admit I am very biased against Baz. He's another Kickstarter boss, and much like Raze, this is not the first game Baz has shown up in. The Baz is a character in the fighting game Dive Kick, which I played a lot of when that game came out, and boy howdy, let me tell you about how he was an unbalanced, overpowered monster. So imagine my surprise when I once again encounter him in this game, and he's just as annoying. When he's spinning his lasso, he doesn't take damage from pogos. When he's swinging around, he moves very quickly. His slam comes out unpredictably, and it can stun you. But it's this lightning that shoots off his body in the second half of the match that's the real issue here, because it makes several angles of approach really dangerous. Because of all this, I'm more than willing to bust out our new charge attack to make shorter work of him. Normally I'd try to hold back, but I'd really like to avoid having this guy make a bigger embarrassment out of me than he's capable of. <laughs> 